Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing well. So, this channel is about e-bikes. I built my first bike back in 2021. Been riding ever since. I've gone through many different bikes, just personally as well as through this channel. But for the first time ever, I just got an electric scooter to test out. And this isn't your average cheap electric scooter. This is a high performance model. It's the Varla Eagle One V2. I recently reviewed on the channel. Check it out if you guys haven't seen it to get the proper uh, background information. But today I want to have a casual conversation comparing this scooter and really just high powered scooters in general against electric bikes. It might seem like a bit of a weird comparison initially but ultimately they're both micro mobility devices, which I think is only going to grow in importance as time progresses. Let's go this way. By the way, it's like absolutely freezing out. Most of the country right now is frozen solid. That's why we have these, uh, these lines on the road. It's, it's like salt or some kind of a solution to help melt the snow. Because I think tomorrow this time it's going to uh, be like a dusting. Not a lot of snow, but I guess enough to warrant all this preparation. So right off the bat, I got to say that I've been super impressed with this scooter. The price tag here is around $600. I'm going to have a link in the description that gives you an additional $100 off. And the specs and the performance of this thing is just crazy at least for the e-bike world. I mean, I've reviewed bikes that cost around $1,500 before, and for that price, you're usually gonna get something around a 750 watt hub motor, possibly a peak of like a thousand, some range like that. The battery is usually gonna be 48 volts, maybe like 14, 15 amp hours. And you're not gonna get anything nice like suspension, dual motors, nothing like that. But here, we get essentially everything you would want. Full suspension, front and rear, and this is a good suspension. It really makes riding the scooter not just more comfortable, but a lot safer, because the wheels here are only 10 inches in diameter. So when you hit a pothole, uh, you really feel it in the suspension. It's, I'm gonna go ahead and say it's required. And for power, this is a dual hub motor system. And somewhat surprisingly, the hub motors here are pretty powerful direct drive hub motors. In essentially every e-bike, they use geared hub motors, which tend to be smaller, more efficient, right? Because of the gearing. But direct drive, I mean, that's where it's at if you want speed, power, and silent operation. Each of these hub motors is a nominal 1,000 watts as well. And I think that's because uh, with electric scooters, the whole regulation laws, uh, it doesn't really exist the same level as with electric bikes. So you guys know that here in North America, e-bikes are supposed to be limited to 28 miles an hour while pedaling, only 20 miles an hour with throttle only. And the maximum wattage is 750. But with scooters, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's no laws at all around these micromobility devices. So if I had to guess, that's how they're getting away with selling scooters that are just super powerful, especially when compared to electric bicycles. Whew. Yeah, and these scooters can handle off-roading just fine. Oh my gosh, that was very deep and icy. You know, let's actually go back this way. There's a park down that way. I could provide a, a more scenic view. So yeah, this thing is crazy powerful. Oh gosh. The combined peak wattage of this vehicle is 3.2 kilowatts. And the battery is uh, a fairly good voltage, 52 at uh, a capacity of uh, just over 20 amp hours. And considering this is a lighter vehicle than most bikes, that battery capacity goes uh, pretty far in terms of range. 
Now in the e-bike world, a pretty good like benchmark bike that's average in every meaning of the word is the Rev 1. Keep in mind it costs more than this scooter at around $2,200 versus the $1,500, $1,600 of the scooter. It is full suspension, we have fat tires, and the battery voltage is the same, even the capacity. It's 52 volts, 20 amp hours. However, that's where the similarities end, unfortunately. It does not have dual hub motors, you only get one motor. It's less powerful, 750 watts, again, because of that legal limit. And the maximum legal speed, again, is about 28 miles per hour. Although I think if you unlock that bike, it can go like 32-ish miles per hour. And in case I didn't mention it, the top speed on this thing is 40 miles an hour. Now, putting that number aside, I think the acceleration is way more important. And this thing hauls extremely hard. And that's due to, again, having two motors and then being direct drive. It's just uh, a lot more kick than most bikes in this range. So strictly in terms of value as an e-bike guy, as much as I love my bike, I have to say, performance per dollar, scooters are the clear winner. But aside from performance and value, we have to talk about the, the form factor here, because obviously the way that you ride a scooter and a bike, it's a completely different experience. The comfort, it's drastically different between the two configurations. And I want to speak to that a little bit more now. So I got to say, the more I've been riding this scooter, I've, I'm feeling less awkward on it. It's becoming more natural. Initially, I did have a lot less control and a feeling of safety on a scooter compared to a bike. And I think the, the main reason for that is the, the distance between the handlebars and the wheel. The bigger this distance, the more kind of wonky and disconnected the handlebars feel. I've even noticed this on bikes that have uh, super high handlebars. It, it does negatively impact the handling. But the other main difference is the fact that I'm standing versus sitting as I would on a regular bike. Now, for short distances, it's not a big deal at all. Completely fine, comfortable. But when going any further distances, like to my gym, for example, I did that once on the scooter, it was kind of weird not being able to sit for the 20 minutes it took me to get there. Also, sitting lowers your center of mass, which also contributes to the better handling found in bikes versus scooters. And that better handling is even more apparent when traveling at faster speeds. I definitely feel more comfortable going fast on a bike versus a scooter. So basically, to summarize here, what I've learned, an e-bike guy that's been riding this high-powered scooter for the first time, is that the value scooters offer is just unmatched in the e-bike world. This kind of performance on a little scooter, I can't believe it outperforms basically every bike I've ever had. However, the trade-off with scooters is their form factor. It's fine for short distances getting around town. If you live in a city, I think a scooter like this makes a lot of sense over a bike. But in the suburbs where I live, where my gym is 12 miles away, one direction, a, a bike with a seat, greater stability, especially at higher speeds, I think is better in that environment. I mean, you can see right now, I'm, I'm on a high speed road, there's no bike lane, and the scooter, I mean, it can do it, it has the speed and power, but it's a little bit out of place, and I get a lot of weird looks on this thing. A bike is certainly more uh, socially acceptable, but again, for just little darts around town, this thing is super convenient and you just can't beat the performance for the dollar spent. So let me know in the comments below what you think of the whole e-bike versus e-scooter proposition. Do you own both or do you strictly stick to one? If you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a like before you go, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.